praying the Holy Ghost a little bit. Come into his presence. Praying the Holy Ghost. In Tabada la Mande Cassette Kebara Jana Madala Gabadala 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 Lakata Kasakata Kata Ikapata Kosakata Kata Libra Gados Kabala Gadala Gaya So we come as we enter your throne and we accept that as your feet we cry holy thou art holy there is no like you in your presence is where Presence in your presence is where we must be. So we come, so we come as we enter your throne, and we come as we at your feet.
Father, we, we thank you for the honor and privilege of God at your presence. We ask that you receive our worship, receive our praise, breathe upon your word, give power to your word in the name of Jesus. As we look into the word of God, let power be released. May our lives align with your will and your purposes in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. The potency and the efficacy of prayer. James chapter 5 verse 16. Therefore, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Where's the scripture? Availeth much. Confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. DJ, no scripture. And then the NIV. NIV. General Day and Co. I need scripture. Are you, are you not even sitting down here like this? Uh, you were absent minded. You were praying. The NIV version of it says, Therefore, confess your faults or your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Hallelujah. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is fellowship with God. Prayer is connection to God. Prayer is making connection with God. Prayer is being in tune with your maker. Prayer is a deliberate, intentional effort to be in sync and in tune with God. That's prayer. Prayer is not a passive thing. Prayer is active. When you are praying, we know you are praying. Prayer is not passive. A person in prayer is actively engaged. You will see it and you will know that the person is engaged. And after the prayer, you will see active signs and active evidences that this person has been with God and this person has been praying. Prayer is enforcing the will of God on earth. Or in your personal situation. Prayer is enforcing the will of God on earth. Or in your personal situation. That's why he said when you pray. Say our father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will. He didn't even say on earth. Thy will be done in earth. In this earth. In this earth. In my life. As it is in heaven. So prayer is enforcing God's will. Every time you pray, you make God's will happen in your life and around you. Every time you pray over a situation, you are bringing God's will to bear. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Even when you pray in tongues, you are enforcing the will of God. In fact, it's the easiest way. To enforce the will of God. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for, as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. For he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Prayer is... Is doing business with God's will. That's prayer. 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 When you put on the scripture late, you drag us back. Walk on yourself and give us scriptures on time. 
Hallelujah. Prayer is enforcing God's will. I think this fan should be switched off. Enforcing God's will in any matter, in any situation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Any man or woman who prays is forming a bridge between God and the earth or in human affairs. Any person who prays is forming a bridge between heaven and human affairs. If God will intervene in human affairs, somebody must pray. Somebody must pray. He said, and I sought for a man among them that will form a bridge between me and my people, and I found none. So God must find somebody that can form a, you know, a bridge, a, form an edge between him and his people so he can intervene. Where the interventions of God are scarce, it is where prayer is scarce. Where the interventions of God are scarce, it is because prayer is scarce in that place. Where satanic operations are rampant, prayer is absent. Satan can operate in a place at will where there is no restraining power, no restraining force. Prayer automatically restrains evil. Prayer is a natural restraint for evil powers. They can't operate where prayer is rampant. I'm telling you. You want to live. You see why people don't pray? They say it's tough. It's hard. To, to stay and pray one hour, two hours. Ah, son. You don't know what is tough. Till the devil slap you with a baube. Or with a Or what do they call the other one? Let one devil sound you. You know which one is tougher. To pray or to suffer affliction. Is somebody here I'm saying? Or for your life to be disorganized. Near success syndrome. You move small. Everything scatter. You move small. Which one is tougher? Prayer is sweet. It's not even tough at all. I advised myself many, many years ago. Everything better shut down if I can't pray. Let everything wait. You did hear what I said? That's my life. Let everything wait. If I can't connect with God, I have no business connecting with anybody. Hallelujah. Success is effortless where prayer is strong. Success is effortless where prayer is strong. Life is hard where prayer is hard. You didn't hear me. Life is hard where prayer life is hard. That is, you can hardly pray. I can hardly do this. I can hardly do that. You are just signing up for a life of suffering. Hallelujah. God does not operate on earth where prayer has not preceded him. God does not operate on earth where prayer has not preceded him. In the whole Bible, where you see much power is in Acts of the Apostles. Much power. You know why? There was much prayer there. Much prayer. Much prayer will produce much power. Less prayer is either less power or no power at all. I hate Christianity that is powerless. In Europe, the young generation in Europe are abandoning the church. In the UK, especially even in the US, they are abandoning the church. They are going for what is called new age movement. That is mostly 
diabolism, sorcery, some sort of power. The youths have left the church because there is no power in the church. No power. Everything John Norman, everybody singing him, he himself, no power. The, the singing of him, it depends on who is singing it. Are you hear what I'm saying? Everything dead. So they, they, are, they are selling churches as mosques. They are selling churches. Youths are going to look for power. Witches. Witchcraft. The New Age movement is basically witchcraft. They are going. So the other day I spoke with a sister who was with us in Calabar. She's been in the UK now for many years. I said, what kind of ministry are you into? She said to me, this was the week before last. She said to me, I'm into new age ministry. I said, what kind of ministry is that? He said, we mingle with people in the new age world. While they display power, we also display power. Ay, 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 ay. If you see this sister, she's an architect, very gentle, soft spoken. But they go there and manifest word of knowledge. They, they, they match power with power. And the people abandon new age and say, let's go. I like this your own. The world is hungry for power. But the church has to be able to pay the price. Pay the price of hearing. They say they, they meet, they go in their gathering, they also go. They sit down, the people do, they do. And you find out that the power of these new age people, very inferior. Very inferior. Praise the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of the Lord. By the instrumentality of prayer, yokes are broken. Captives are set free. Satanic forces are forced to submit. The day I knew how weak Satan was and his demons is when my pastor of 15 years took me into the deliverance room for us to cast out a devil. I said, eh? These, these demons are weak like this. Hey. I started casting anywhere I saw them. I became a caster. Anywhere I saw them. I didn't know they didn't have power. Eh? I started casting out devils. I'm telling you. Their power is inferior. But when you are a prayerless person, they will appear very strong. Very insurmountable. Because you lack connection. He said to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. And a living dog is better than a dead lion. You can have all the features. If you are not connected to him in prayer, you are, you, are, you are as bad as a dead lion. A living dog is better than is what, what the Bible says. Hallelujah. To be prayerless is to be powerless. To be prayerless is to be vulnerable. To be without prayer life is to have a life of too much struggles. I rather struggle to pray than to struggle at life. Na teka luce prefatos, makela tokaraba, zeki anamande letes. Choose. You either struggle to pray than struggle. You struggle at life. Life torture you, punish you. Everything wrong happens to you. Why? Because you can't stand the fight to conquer in the place of prayer. <laughs> the secret of great men is the secret place. The secret of great victories is the secret place. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then you see all the blessings all the way to verse 16. Why? Because he dwells in the secret place. He knows how to dwell. Hallelujah. 
To be weak in prayer is to be vulnerable to even the weakest attack. To be weak in prayer is to be exposed. To be exposed. That song, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross. Huh? From victory unto victory, his army shall be till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye that trust your own. Put on full armor. Each piece put on with prayer. That's where I was going to. Each piece put on with prayer. Eh? So you can put on helmet. No prayer. You are defenseless. You can carry the sword. No prayer. You are, you are carrying a stick. You can put on the shield of faith. No prayer. It will shield you. When you are prayed up and you carry the word of God, you will see things. That's how to put on the armor. You will see things. But when you are not prayed up, no matter how much you read, is my book of Bible stories. Uh, Christian religious knowledge. BK. Bible knowledge. Where you had A without any spiritual anything in your life. Is somebody hearing me today? Prayer. In that Ephesians 6, he after put he said, pray with all manner of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It's like our people don't have Bible, so I better leave them alone. Praise God. Pray with all manner of prayer and supplication. Because the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. How do you achieve sober soberness and vigilance? Prayer. Is this somebody who is not sober? They are not prayerful. <laughs> be sober. Be vigilant. First Peter 5, 8. For your adversary, the devil, roams about seeking whom he may. He may. He may. He may devour. He can't devour everybody. But there are people he may. He may be able to devour. You see why some people will enter the plane and come out. He can't crash. They enter the boat. Come down. He can't sink. The accident. They be in car. The car can't have accident. Even when he tries, God stops it. You understand what I'm saying? They pass through robbers, thieves, nothing happens. Are you hearing me? It's when you have confidence in the place of prayer. There is a realm of confidence you have and robbers enter a place. You to match fire for fire. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Bishop Berekbo said he was in a hotel. Please give my water. I said you should bring it here now. <laughs> Bishop Berekbo was in a hotel. And in the midnight, robbers struck. And you know what? The bishop prays in the night. Since he was a young minister, he's been praying the night. Brother, go, go and put the water and bring it back. Thank you. So I said, oh, you want to go and put the water here? Said, Are you preaching? Praise the Lord. Where was I? In fact, don't bring the water again. Where was I? <laughs> he was rubber struck in that hotel in the night. And he was preaching. Sorry, he was praying. He heard bah, bah, eh, all kinds of noise. He said he came out, put his hand in his waist, and said, in the name of Jesus, of Nazareth, he didn't finish praying. He said, he has a gun. He has a gun. He has a gun. They took off. 
audacity. That's not a normal person. That's somebody who just came from the secret place. That's a lion. If they fired a shot, all of them would have died. But that's not normal. You, 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 some of us are too normal. You are too normal. So normal things happen to you. Too normal. Get out of the realm of normalcy. Enter unusual realms. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is facilitated by prayer. When you are unusual, you will pass through what everybody passed through. Come out clean. What kills people cannot kill you. What frustrated others cannot frustrate you. Because you are not normal. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell someone say I'm not normal. A man who will drink two hours, three hours, five hours of prayer a day and chop some chapters of scriptures, ruminate them. Can't be normal. Can't be normal. You are strange. I'm telling you. That's the realm. Let's leave this weak Christianity. This, this milk and honey <clears throat> or butter Christianity. Ascend to a new realm. There is a dimension of Christianity where you are in charge, you control things by the instrumentality of prayer. Let me tell you something. How you know you are spiritually healthy is that you are constantly trying to pray more. <clears throat> That's after praying three hours, you don't feel like you have done anything. You are constantly looking for how to pray more. That's a spiritually healthy person. Such people, very dangerous. They are looking, they will tell themselves, okay, on Saturday, I, I, I'm going to pray for five hours. I pray. They finish praying for five hours. I wonder, but I don't feel something. They, they, they fired five hours and they finish nothing. Please, can you help the homie? Nothing, nothing. They still feel hungry. When you are the kind, small prayer, you feel satisfied, you feel full, my brother. You are, your well is too shallow. Your well is too shallow. Believe God to give, help give you deeper wells. Stop shallow Christianity. Witches and wizards play on top of your head like that. Like somebody who says, I am your enemy. And then you sit down and be eating with them. They will kill you. When you say you are the enemy of the devil, be a true enemy. Are you understand what I'm saying? Be a true enemy. One pastor went to his pastor and asked his pastor, how can somebody pray for like 24 hours, 12 hours like that? The pastor said to him, when you finish praying, start all over again. As you finish praying 10 hours, start again. He went and prayed. I think he ended up praying between 12, 12 to 18 hours. He stepped out. A madman saw him, screamed and ran. It's not normal again. Some of us see a book. This Ekbo, the way you run, as if you saw a real demon. Can I tell you a little story of my life? When I was in Federal Government College, Ikorekwene, in the 80s, you know Ekbo Ikorekwene? Not this one they are doing now. Those ones, they are almost naked. Black. Oh, sharp. They used to cut people's hands. And I've been reading the Bible. You shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost, I shall have power. I can't fear Ekbo. Do you know that I used to look for her, they will come out, so me too, I will come out. I was a teenager. So one day, they came out. That's when I decided to go to class. Because, because I preach in school, they sent me out of dormitory. So they came out, me too, I came out. Ekbo is walking here, I'm walking here. Kura. 
Apostle Paul, let him try anything now. You see what will happen here. That infant, that, that level of faith that is careless. That rugged I used to pray, is it one hour a day that time? Or one hour, my eye was red like that. My eye, I don't know what I, I don't think I prayed up to two hours that time. One hour. And he's walking here, I'm walking here. Is whether he doesn't see me, I don't know. Because you are not supposed to be standing near them. I go to a place and they are shooting another, I pass. There is a way you move, fear will fear you. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -uh. I used to look for her with test power to show that the Bible is true. Is somebody hearing me? They say, they say they are doing it, but they say they can't try it where I am. You can't try it. When you talk, it is because of where you are coming from. There is a way you behave when you know what is backing you up. If Wari's son come here now, he can be talking to Ruwe anyhow. You know why? The commander in chief of Nigerian Armed Forces is at his back. You know what I'm saying? He can tell a policeman, need him. The policeman will need them. It may not happen in America, but it will happen in Nigeria. Need them, my friend. Nonsense commissioner like you. You will need them. Why? Not because of who he is. Because of whose he is. What is backing him? Who is backing him? When your father is nearby, you can chance somebody. Get away there! And you wonder why he's giving this small boy strength. His father is not far. Your father cannot be, cannot be in a back road. And you are telling somebody, get away there. By the time they are through with you, your father will not recognize you. But when your father is near, you not see your father here. The person may not see, but you see. Say, get away. Bunk up. Scally what? John. As they pursue you, do you stand and fight? Straight to your father. Your father says, who goes there? Who goes there? Avogado. Ask your neighbor, who is backing you up? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your life can only go as far as your prayer life will allow it to go. <laughs> your life can only go as far as your prayer life will allow it to go. You see this current level you are in, you can survive it because you have mastered it. You must need another realm of prayer to ascend a new level to be able to handle the devils at that level. Because every level brings new devils. You wonder why a man used to have hundreds of thousands. He was doing well. As soon as he began to handle millions, he started drinking, started smoking, started womanizing, becoming stupid, drove away his family, living alone. The next is living in the gutter. He's deserted. That's he dies of liver cirrhosis, liver complication, and liver malitis. Dies. What killed him? He reached a level he was not prepared for. He reached a level he didn't have the kind of prayer back up to handle. Have you wondered why some, sing, some, some ladies get married and become useless? They were not prepared for it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Prayer is the technology by which we change things in the realm of the spirit so they can be adjusted in the physical. You change things in the realm of the spirit and in the physical they are naturally adjusted by the power of prayer. Even your health, you can correct it in the spirit. Do you know that? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul or spirit 
Some versions of the Bible say your spirit prospers. He said the spirit of a man will bear his infirmity. But a broken spirit who can bear. So when your spirit is strong, you conquer adversity. And what strengthens your spirit is prayer and the word of God. Hallelujah. People who pray control things in the realm of the spirit and walk free in the natural. What takes power away from prayer? What takes power? Is it possible to pray without power? Yes. Haven't you seen a lot of people who pray? They pray, but they are still victims. They pray, but they are still oppressed. Why? No. You cannot be in connection with the Father and still be messed around by devils. No, sir. It's not possible. Let me tell you something. One of the strategies of Satan is to make sure you never ascend in prayer so you remain under their control. You see that sleep used to sleep during prayer time? It's all normal. It's not normal. You see that rain that used to fall every five o'clock? Only in your roof. It's not normal. You see that tiredness? That will grip you. Now you now start remembering how hard you have been working. It's a deliberate attempt to keep you small so you remain under oppression. When will you be tired? You should get tired. I'm tired of life like this. <laughs> Let me tell you. If you take it easy in the secret, it will deal with you in the open. I don't take it easy in the secret. I can go to bed by 11, by 2. Whether it's me or something, <laughs> will wake me up. <laughs> I'm not joking. If he try too hard, 3 o'clock. If I linger, I am the one that lingered. Because there is this alarm. It's as if a council in heaven say, um, all ye citizens, uh, stand up and hear announcement. Are you hearing me? That thing you are seeing where I wake up early. It wasn't like that all the time. There was a time I felt oppressed. I wake up at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. There are times I wake up many years ago and ask myself, what is today? What is today? I remember one day in Calabar, I woke up. At, what is today? Sunday. Jesus. And church is by 8 and it's 6 o'clock. <laughs> and it, I need two buses or two, like, two, two motorcycles to reach church. That's the day you know what is called the mercy of God. Jesus, show me your mercy. If you have ever shown anybody mercy before, show me today. Jesus, I have no strength. Let your strength be made perfect. But you can't be praying that prayer every time. You'll be a thief. Hallelujah. Who is getting what I'm talking about today? I rather battle it in this. I, I, there, there is a realm I want to reach. There is a realm I want to reach, and I will reach there. Uh, let me not talk. Yes, it's something. Now, there was a time I was looking for where I am. I've reached here now. I'm looking for another one. So it's like that one is better. When you are constantly hungry, you are not within satanic reach. You can't be within his reach. You are not looking out to run away from him. You are running after, after God. So you can't be chasing him and Satan is near. As how? That's a realm I'm looking for. When I hear of anybody operating a certain prayer life, I say, yeah, it's possible though. It could take me two years, but I will reach there. It's true. I will covet it. I will try. I will practice it. It will mess me up. I will try again till the thing enters and establishes. Before, to wake up in the night to pray. As how? Me, wake up. <laughs> if it's not five o'clock, forget it. But now, uh, I'm the one that will tell myself, 
Self, sleep. Sleep, not rest, rest. I was okay, let me just put my head down. It's like 1.30, 2. I put my head down. 15 minutes. You know, how, thank God for tongues. Sleep in the eye, tongue in the mouth. Lapata kapako sokopakata. Japara bata la bada bada. Then something enters you. Ah, baraba. You you go ahead. Then heavy sleep come. You look at the time. It's three thirty. Relax more. Relax more. Relax more. You can't sleep fully. Responsibilities on your head. Things are in your front. There are things you have to accomplish. There are things you are looking for. There are dimensions you want to enter. Can't be sleeping anyhow. For, for, for warrior believers, daytime is the best time to sleep. Let me to tell you. While men slept, the enemy did what? So be with the enemy. He's not sleeping. You too, let's do business here. You know, mothers that have children, if you want to stay alive, when the child sleep, sleep. Newborn baby, when the child wake up, wake up. If the child sleep and you are awake, you also have high blood pressure. Because the child is now controlling your... Uh, as, he, as he sleep, please let me go and sleep. You sleep. Next thing you hear, heart starting. <coughs> That's heart starting. Baby, <laughs> I am glad I don't have any more baby. It's terrible. Jesus. Say, I pray in the name of Jesus. Say, I pray. See, Corona. Corona exposed our prayerlessness. See, everybody. That you can breathe. I have, ma I have masks. You understand? I have the one that looks like ninja. I have the hospital own. I have the one that uh, looks like normal everybody own. I have shield. One in this car, one in that car. But I'm not wearing it out of fear. I'm wearing it to make others comfortable. You understand what I'm saying? I like to shake everybody. People are afraid to shake. No, don't come. 
to church, oh, government, don't open up, oh, don't open up. Oh. All people start to die in here. By 10 communion service. But, and we go with fasting. 10 communion service. And we take communion and we minister. We make decrees as a church. Send us a common decree. Say, if my people. Do you know who have terminated corona? Both in Nigeria, Africa, worldwide. But the way the news reported it. Coronavirus has just killed a special assistant to the president. The virus is real. Please stay indoors. Don't go out. Where you are indoors, wear your mask. Sanitize your hand. Wash your nose. Wash your eye. Cool word is and stay. They, they did it till people say, Ooh, he killed the president PA. Who am I? Haven't you heard? A living dog is better than a dead lion. Who, who is the PA to the president? So we tremble. Corona. Meanwhile, the cure for corona is chloroquine. But they suppress it. They fight it. They, because they have agenda. If you hear that this thing can prevent people from dying. Shouldn't you rejoice? But they say, no. Clinical trial prove that it will give you heart condition. Chloroquine that we have been taking in this country. How many people have heart condition? Because they told them to do the trial. They went and tried for people that are almost dying. It's supposed to be tried. As soon as you notice you have the virus. Take hydroxychloroquine. Take uh, uh, zinc and what's the other one? Uh, Zithromax. Bam! Finish. But they say no, no. Vaccine. Vaccine. To hell with their vaccine. Like chloroquine. You know why they did it? It's cheap. All those drugs in America, it's not up to $20. Here, you could buy it for 400 naira. But guys are now sharp. I hear one can be 5,000. For chloroquine. <laughs> so you didn't even need the power of God. You just needed chloroquine. People have not known that it's a connection between WHO, media, China, Gates. So they say, when, when they admitted me in the hospital, they put a big screen, big television screen, maybe like this, this size, in my room. Guess what they were showing? Channels. Coronavirus has just been, <coughs> there they have, coronavirus, the, the coronavirus, I said, ah, ah. I said, off the TV. What is it? You can't be looking at corona and not be coronized. But if you lift up your eyes to the hills, from whence cometh your help? Ah! Some things will lie flat before you. They took me into isolation. After being prayed up and prayed for, they tested me the first time, negative. You will stay there two weeks, but I stayed there less than five days. They said, come and go, Pastor, since you don't have corona. Leave our hospital. I said, I'm leaving. Carry my. I was still having other issues. But they said, I can go any other place. But Corona is what they are dealing here. 
Since I don't have corona, I just come and go. I say, I'm going. Nonsense. You understand what I'm saying? Because they would have kept me to treat other uh, small, small things that were disturbing me. They say, no, corona is our focus. I carry myself and left and continue my treatment. Eh? God had to prove to me that his power, all the signs were corona signs. But the test said it's not corona. Go and produce your own test. I carried my bag and I left. As I landed in the reception, I told them, I came, I saw, and I conquered. I told them. They were laughing. I said, I'm not joking. Eh? And when we entered the hospital, I told my wife, we can't stay here more than five days. It didn't make sense because you need two weeks treatment and you need to be tested two or three times. I told her, we won't stay here more than five days. On the fifth day, afternoon, they said, Pastor, come and go. You are negative. I said, thanks. May your mouth open up. Speak from the secret place. Talk from your place of power. Talk from your place of fellowship. If you are hearing me, say yes. Bring the water now. I hope you won't bring jerry can this time. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. What makes, takes power out of prayer? One, when the heart is not right with God. When the heart is not what? It's not right with God. The earnest, um, uh, amplify, the earnest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It says, confess to one another your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray for one another that you may be restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. So, when the heart is not right, you can, you can talk, but you won't connect. Are you hearing me? You lack power. Oh, Basimbo, Jehovah Basimbo, Jehovah Muru, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shama, Jesus. Uh, you can pray all that, but your heart is not right with God. You can't connect. It is the prayer of a righteous man. The word righteous is from the word right. You are in right standing with God. Right positioning with God. That's what makes you connect. And what does it mean to be righteous? To be born again. That's what it means. To, when you are born again, you are righteous. Second Corinthians 5.21 It says, for he has made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? That might be made the righteousness of God in him. Psalm 24. What does it mean to be, to, for, for your heart to be right with God? For you to have clean hands. Clean hands. Somebody say clean hands. When your hands are clean, the money in your account is not stolen. It's not fraudulent. I used to wonder, people who steal money, how do they sleep? You are still able to sleep. I used to hear of pastors. They say as they just collect the offering, the pastor said they should put it in his boot. Habastor. <sighs> that one is not the pastor. That one is a Habastor. They should put it in his boot. When they talk, he said, this, this is not your work. This is my office. I, uh, how do they say it? You eat from your... That hand is not clean. You can't pray. Don't deceive yourself. There is what you touch. Prayer cannot work. What will make one of my sons here, after giving his life to Jesus, he used fraud to gain admission into Unio. I think he even entered year two. But the more he went, the, the more he was disconnected. He dropped the admission and went, left the admission. Why? He realized his hands were not clean. That's a genuine child of God. You hear me? He got another admission into a polytechnic. No school fees. He dropped out. One day I asked him. He told me, I said, ah, and you know me. You work closely with me. And you had money issues to pay school fees. Even if it's to pay for 5000 till you finish. So, we sentenced him back to school. 
He has finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He has finished. He has married. He was soon born. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your heart must be right. Who shall ascend? Psalm 24 verse 3. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He that has clean hands. He that has clean hands. Read the rest. Let me jump to number two. Number two. When you have grudges and ill feelings. Grudges and ill feelings in your heart. Against people or with people. It will take power out of your prayer. That's why he said confess your faults one to another. And pray. Open up. Tell the person I've not been happy with you. Or something I heard you said. Or something, something, something. Open up. Whatever worries you. Kill it. So that you can flow in prayer. Prayer is my main reason for living in peace with people. That's my secret. Prayer. I don't want to go to the presence of God and be blocked. You can't see God where there is no peace. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's Hebrews 12, 14. Then 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Give us Amplified. Amplified. Are you still with me? Read. Everybody want to go. Without anger, without quarreling, without resentment or doubt. When those things are in your heart, power leaves your prayer. I will never, never, never forgive him. I will never, never. You are here. Yes, somebody. Wake up. Stop talking like that. Do you know what it takes to forgive you? Forgive them. You the person kill your father. Tell the person you kill my father. You alone, you kill my father. But I forgive you. For somebody to do you harm and you refuse to forgive the person, you've given the person the power to continue to do you harm. It's 516 Amplified Bible. The heartfelt continuous prayer. Not this amplified. And I said James 516, not first Peter 5 8. James 516. Now uh, the computer has mind of its own. Okay, don't give us any scripture at all. That's what the Amplified says. James 5, 16, Amplified. He said, confess your faults one to another. He says, look at the next part here. The earnest, heartfelt, continued, continued. Paul said, pray without. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not faint. So the power of prayer is revealed in consistency. The power of prayer is revealed in consistency. The more you pray, the better you pray. The more you pray, the more answers you get. The more you pray, the more powerful you are in the spirit. The more you pray, the more effective your life becomes. So consistent prayer has cumulative effect. Did you hear what I said? Cumulative effect is block upon block. You've been praying how many hours all these years? It looks as if nothing is happening. Keep praying. One day, you will just stand and things are happening. And guess what? No matter what happens, you will continue that your prayer that you have been praying. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You can decide to take a fast. Seven days dry. You have been praying 15 minutes. All this while. Then one day you took seven days dry fast. And you prayed three, three hours each day. Believe me. If you leave that seven days fast. And you don't continue. You will be as useless as somebody that has been eating five times a day. Believe me. It is consistency. Building block upon block. Block upon block. Never stopping. Never ceasing. Hallelujah. Over time, when you pray consistently, you begin to receive encounters, visions, revelations, encounters, all kinds of things start to happen. See Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. 1 to 5. Acts 10, 1 to 5. Let's all read together. 1 to go. A devout man, one that feared God with all his house and gave much alms to the people. And what? How did he pray? Always. What happened to him? He received an encounter, an angelic visitation, telling him specifically, send men to Joppa, to one Simon, whose son name is Peter, living in the house of a man whose name is Simon, near the seaside. Send for him, and he will come and tell you what to do. Woo! Where prayer is strong, encounters are rampant. Start having encounters, visions, revelations. Number four, number four, when prayer is not heartfelt, when prayer is not passionate, when prayer is not earnest, when it's not fervent, it will lack power. It will lack what? Power. That's our last point. No, almost the last. When you pray from top of your heart, from the top of your mind, Father God, I don't, I don't want to thank you. I don't want to. I don't want to. How many of you know Reverend Dr. Mark by? When you see him pray in the public, does he shout? He doesn't shake. Father Lord, I want you to send your angel to minister to 20 people here. Thou power of God, move. You will go and eat a mango kwa with dodo and rice and apple and come. That power of God move. It's you that will move because <laughs> you don't know the man's secret practice. Can I tell you something about the man? He prays six hours every day. How many hours? Since which year? Since when? Only God knows. I thought when I see him again, he will say it has reduced due to age. Mm -mm. Six hours every day. And he reads certain number of books. Every, as if you enter the room, they have not allowed me to enter the room, but one day they will let me at least peep. The books are everywhere around the bed. They are a sleeping companion. So when you see certain manifestations, something out of behind, are you understand what I'm talking about? Something is behind. At this age, he still prays his hours. Then you are just 40. Is it our 20 years I've been praying? I, I don't know. It's, you know, there's a way you reach in life. When you reach in life, when you are today, you don't pray much, you see the power of God. Stupidity has caught you. Be delivered. At 70, how many? He's still praying six hours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I heard it many, many years ago. I heard it after some years. I heard it till now. I'm still hearing it. Six hours a day. At that age. Then when he said, that power of God move. One day I visited him in the morning. Around 10 o'clock. He said, how are you? Pastor, welcome. Uh, 
Have I just been having a wonderful time with God? God just showed me the person that stole our money in the office. I'm going to go and confront him now. He doesn't even know I know he's the one that stole the money. And he says, how did he do? He said, the Lord showed me now. The Lord is me. The Lord has to show me. He, he stole our money. I've been asking them since all of them have denied. I just saw him. He's the one that stole it. Are you understand? <laughs> Around such men, mind your business. Gehazi, where are you coming from? Nowhere. He said, went not my spirit with you when you pursued Naaman. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman cleave to you and your family. Ha! Ah. Praise God. When your prayer is heartfelt, when you connect from the heart, you will have power. When prayer should go beyond moving your mouth, you should have heart connection. Heart unction. That's what it has affected your emotion. When you stay there, you don't want to go. You don't know why you are on fire. You just know you are on fire. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. You need what? To pray in the Holy Ghost. It will help you. That's where you need worship. You need what? Worship. Have materials that you can play that can take you to the presence of God. There are songs I hear for a greater portion of today, I was listening to a man called Joe Metal. Almost everything he was singing is Ghanaian. I don't understand it. But I understand it. I said, it is a spirit thing, not head thing. He will be singing there. I know some of those songs still today, but I don't know the interpretation. Because I don't want English that will interrupt my train of thought. Sing your Ghana thing. Let me flow with you in the spirit. When I want to study, pray, and do many things at the same time, I look for language. Jesus, I can't in any way. Since I don't understand it, but I know the spirit of it, we can flow. I can be dry. Pastor can be dry, especially after giving out like this. And you want to pray. The thing is not connected. That wonderful name. Jesus. Oh, that. I love you, Lord. You know, walk. Awesome, God. Just play something. Put it in my ear. Tongue, change dimension. Diri, makrika, buru, lestapa, elakato, para. That's dimension changes. Heart connects. Why? Psalm 22. Is it 22? Verse 3. He inhabits the praise of his people. Psalm 100 verse 3. I will enter into a gate with what? Thanksgiving. And to his courts with what? Praise. He gives you access. Somebody shout hallelujah. Or oh, verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. Huh? Check it very well. Yes. Hallelujah. That's where you need fasting. You want your prayer to connect in the heart. Somebody say fasting. You need to add fast at least once a week. Have a day that you, you collapse for God. You and God. No food till night. You and him alone. And just pray. Even if you go anywhere, you are, you, you, you are, you are, you are shut down. Or you can take a long fast. Ten days. Seven days. Three days. 20 days, 21 days, 40 days, 100 days. Why? I want to jack up my prayer life. I'm telling you. Give it a try. On your own. Pray about it. Take a long fast. You will not reach half of that fast. Strange things start to happen in your life. Strange things. Strange invitations. Strange visitations begins to happen. We will continue on Sunday. But for now, stand up to your feet. Hallelujah. Can somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody stay where you are. 
Brother in the red and white, white upstairs. See him going. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Don't go anywhere. Stay where you are. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Begin to thank him. Pray. I, want, I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Shada bakata kasakata. Leke teke braha kaskotapa. Ela katapa kaya. Somebody lift your hands and say, Father, revive my prayer line. Shout, say, Father, revive me. Begin to pray that prayer, pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Shakata kata kata kapakata. Microphones, microphones. Shakapa kata kapakata kapakato kosakapa. Shakapakata kapakala katas. Rakapakatas kapakata. Likwala kapakatas kapala. Reke pakato sakaya. Ela pakata namakata. Ela kapakata kapata. Ela patakaya pata. Jesus, Shapatala, Elakata, 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 Zapala, 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 Zapala. Get out! Begin to pray, 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 pray. shall flow. Rivers of living water. You are going to pray. No more dryness in prayer. Say after me. Say, Father. No more dryness. No more dryness in my prayer life. From today, out of my belly flows living water. Fire. In the name of Jesus. Pray. Lagabada <laughs> Lipata kaso kopa kata, isha pata kata, lipata kapa, lipata sa. In Jesus' name. Finally, lift up your two hands. Say, Father, I set my closet on fire. My prayer closet. Catch fire. Catch fire. 
Catch fire. Catch fire. Go ahead and begin to pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray for anybody that needs to be born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be saved. You need Jesus in your life. Probably if you die today, you're not sure you'll make heaven. You know? Your prayer life has died since. You have been trying. It's not working. The only way to alter things is at the altar. You're saying, Pastor, I'm the one you are talking about. Wherever you are, please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I accept your sacrifice on the cross. I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. And I vow to serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You have prayed that prayer. 